everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the life and career of child actor Stanley Fafara, best known for playing the character of Whitey Whitney on the classic sitcom Leave It to Beaver. Stanley Fafara was born in San Francisco, California on September 20th, 1950. At the urging of his mother, Stanley embarked on an acting career at a very young age, showcasing his natural talent in various commercials and TV shows, including a small part on Ann Southern's popular CBS sitcom, Private Secretary, when Stanley was only four years old. Stanley continued to have minor, primarily uncredited television roles, but in 1957, his luck was about to change when his mother took him to an open casting call for a promising new show called Leave It to Beaver. Stanley beat out a room full of kids and was cast as Hubert Whitney, Beaver's classmate and one of Beaver's best friends, a kid that everyone calls by the nickname Whitey and Stanley's older brother Luke, who had accompanied him that day, also came away victorious, winning the role of Tui Brown, who was one of Wally's closest friends on the show. Stanley made his debut as Whitey in the first episode ever aired of Leave it to Beaver, an episode called Beaver Gets Spelled. In this episode, Beaver mistakenly believes that their teacher, Miss Canfield, is trying to kick him out of school, but in reality, she just wants him to be in the upcoming school play. My favorite Whitey episode appears in the fourth season, the episode In the Soup, where Wally is throwing a party and wants Beaver out of the house. So Beaver makes plans to stay the night at Whitey's house. As the boys walk to Whitey's house, they spot a brand new billboard for Zesto's soup. And this billboard depicts a bowl of hot steaming soup and Beaver and Whitey argue if there is actual soup in this bowl, and Whitey persuades Beaver to climb up the billboard and find out. Beaver climbs up the billboard and falls into the soup bowl, and firefighters are called to fish him out while the entire neighborhood watches, including Wally and all of his party guests. Leave it to Beaver was a huge hit, turning Stanley into a recognizable child star. But after the show ended, Stanley didn't have much desire to continue acting. He attended North Hollywood High School and just wanted to enjoy being a teenager. But Stanley, who had begun working at such a young age, he didn't have a typical childhood. So I have to assume that he may have had some trouble fitting in with kids who had known each other since elementary school. While Stanley was on the set, these kids had spent most of their lives together. They had played together in the playground, sat together in homeroom, attended birthday parties together, dances together, spent weekends playing ball together at the park. Stanley didn't have the same chances to hang out and have fun as these other kids did. And so, without these established connections, Stanley fell in with the wrong crowd. He started drinking and then eventually began dabbling with even stronger substances. And as those substance issues worsened, this once wholesome child star found himself on a dangerous path. Stanley's parents convinced him to go live with his sister in Jamaica in what I can only assume was an attempt at an intervention, hoping that maybe the change of scenery would do him some good and probably trying to get him away from his self-destructive friends. Stanley was a creative person, and during his time in Jamaica, he spent quite a bit of that time painting and was even able to successfully sell some of his paintings while he was there. And I have looked on the internet trying to find anything that Stanley had painted, and sadly, I, I couldn't find anything. And I wish I could, because I would be really, really interested in to see what Stanley had painted. Stanley was also a talented musician and was said to have lived with Paul Revere and the Raiders at one point, 
Art and music were two passions that Stanley carried throughout his life. And Stanley did return to the United States in the early 1970s. And I had read that he was married briefly, but I can't confirm that. If he was, that marriage ended in divorce. Um, because Stanley's life was turbulent. He had several arrests, including one that landed him in prison for a year. Stanley made many attempts to hold jobs after being released, but his addictions continued to hold him back. After spending several years in and out of treatment facilities, Stanley finally found sobriety in 1995. Stanley spent the final years of his life in Portland, Oregon, volunteering to help others battling the same substance issues he had fought for many years. In 1998, when a Leave it to Beaver website asked why he chose to volunteer his time, this is what he said. Quote, it comes with a package, kind of like a deal gone good. I get a lot of pleasure out of service, but the bottom line is that whether I am in the mood to help or not doesn't matter. It's payment for a new life. By the grace of God, my life has been spared, and I owe it to others to help them find the freedom I have enjoyed. Sadly, Stanley passed away in September of 2003 from complications of a hernia surgery. Stanley's funeral was held at St. Elizabeth of Hungary Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and because no money was left in his estate for burial, the church's parishioners pulled together and paid for Stanley's grave, and many years later, in 2016, they pitched in once again to help purchase a headstone. Stanley is buried amongst veterans of the Civil War and Spanish-American War at the Redland Pioneer Cemetery just outside of Portland, Oregon. If you have a favorite Whitey scene, please leave it below in the comments, and thank you so much for watching.